Welcome back, have a nice day everyone. Today we will update you with the latest Miami Dolphins news. Let's get started now. Miami Dolphins busy week is far from over with one days left. The Miami Dolphins have had an extremely busy week and it is far from over, even with only one days left in the week. Then there are the Buccaneers on Sunday. How busy has this week been? Well, we have seen roster movements, we have seen injured reserve movements, we have had episodes of, taken out of context, injuries, signings, but fear not, Deshaun Watson is still on the Texans roster. Regardless, here is look back at the busy week that was in case you missed any of it. Jakeem Grant. Grant was traded to Chicago for 2023 sixth round pick and immediately the fan base began cheering on social media only to criticize Chris Greer for the compensation and the contract he restructured earlier. Shortly thereafter, the Patriots traded Pro Bowl corner Stephon Gilmore to the Panthers for a 2023 sixth round pick and just like that, everyone cheered Greer and then criticized him for not trading a sixth for Gilmore. Reinforcement Why Most Stay Off Social Media Will Fuller Fuller broke a finger on Sunday against the Colts and is now on injured reserve. He missed the first two games of the season, one on suspension and another for personal reasons. He has been paid almost $10 million this year. Austin Ryder, with Michael Dieter injured, the Dolphins signed Ryder off the Saints practice squad. Ryder was the starting center on the Chiefs' Super Bowl winning championship team. Devontae Parker, expected to have a big role on Sunday, Parker tweaked his hamstring and is now questionable and could be a game-time decision. He would be the third wide receiver to vacate the roster this week alone. Isaiah Ford off the practice squad anyone? Of course he will be activated. Jacoby Brissett, Brissett told the media they were going to win in Tampa Bay this weekend. Social media blew up over the bulletin board material when in fact, he said they were not going to Tampa Bay to watch Tom Brady play but were going, to Tampa, to, try, and win. Again, why you stay off social media? Austin Jackson, it was reported that Jackson is on his second notebook already detailing ways he can get better. He then followed up with a remark that he can play every position on the offensive line. He currently grades as one of the worst tackles in the NFL. Hopefully, he is reading those books. Brian Flores, pressed about his two offensive coordinators approach in the play calling, Flores not only said he wasn't changing it, he said he likes the current system. That raised some eyebrows. Raekwon Davis. Davis has been removed from the injured reserve list but it is unclear if he will be active or not on Sunday. Miami could use his run-stopping ability. 5 Keys for the Dolphins to beat the Buccaneers in Week 5. No team has presented the Miami Dolphins with the type of challenge they will face in their Week 5 matchup, as they travel to Raymond James Stadium to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brian Flores' squad has struggled with teams like the Colts who were forced to play a lot of backups due to injuries, and they weren't able to capitalize and leave with a victory. Now, they have to play one of the most high-powered offenses in the league, so no one is giving them much of a chance. What would the Dolphins have to do to have a shot to win this game? Use Jalen Waddell like a first-round receiver. Miami highest scoring effort came in their Week 3 loss to the Raiders. This was the only time Waddell led the team in targets. The rookie was thrown to 13 times with 12 receptions. The yardage numbers are not exactly where you'd like them to be, as he finished with only 58 yards. Against a team that struggles in coverage, that should get better. What makes Waddle important this week is his ability to get open quickly. Tampa Bay's front seven will put pressure on Jacoby Brissett, so having an open target in the first few seconds will be imperative. Protect the starting quarterback. Speaking of the Buccaneers' front seven, they have the ability to completely alter a team's game plan by simply dominating their opponent. Whether it's Indomitian Sue, Vita Vea, Jason Pierre-Paul, limited in practice, Shaq Barrett, Levante David, or Devin White someone is going to be wreaking havoc on most plays. Miami offensive line has been below average at best this season. Everyone has received blame week to week, and it's well deserved. Dolphins quarterbacks are being sacked 3.2 times per game, good for fourth most in the league. Keep the quarterback off his back and give him a chance to make a play this week. Make Tom Brady uncomfortable in the pocket. Quarterbacks don't like pressure. That's obvious. Brady is no different in that regard. If Josh Boyer's defense can use Emmanuel Ogba, Jalen Phillips, Christian Wilkins, and others to keep Brady from moving up in the pocket and getting that extra second of time, they will keep him from making those great plays. It's when he's able to extend for just a bit that coverage can break down, and he can place a perfect pass. 
the pass rush hasn't been the worst part of this team this season. Ogba has eight quarterback hits through four games. Phillips had his best game of the season last week with six pressures on just 22 pass rushing snaps. This one isn't too far-fetched. Do not play zone. Brady is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, quarterbacks of all time. He's seen every defensive concept a coordinator could throw at him. It's not going to be too easy to fool him. It might even be impossible. The one thing you can't do is run zone defense against him. He will be able to pick apart every zone he sees. Miami has the cover corners to at least attempt to stick with the Bucks trio of receivers, so they need to make Brady be perfect. Play smart football. This could be said every week, and it should be. However, in a game where there is a clear talent discrepancy, the Dolphins cannot afford to make mistakes. Through four weeks, they've given the ball away 1.5 times per game, good for seventh most in the league. Tampa Bay takes away the ball 1.5 times per game, ranked at seventh most themselves. Miami is also in the top 10 for most penalties per game with 6.8. If you're going to give Tampa extra chances or yards, you're not going to come out on top. Three bold predictions for the Miami Dolphins against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Week 5. The Miami Dolphins have the challenging task of traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the defending Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Traveling to Tampa Bay won't be what is tough, but playing four quarters against Tom Brady will be. Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time, and he hasn't slowed down this season. The Buccaneers are banged up in defense, mainly in the secondary, but they still have one of the best offenses in the NFL. Miami defense will be the key factor in the game, and if they can play well, Miami will be able to hang around in this game. Do the Miami Dolphins have a chance? Miami will likely be one of the biggest underdogs in the NFL this weekend, and I think that is a fair assessment. The Dolphins have done nothing to show they could beat the Buccaneers, and if they somehow pulled out a win, it would be one of the biggest regular season upsets of the 2021 season. Starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa is still on injured reserve, so it will be Jacoby Brissett trying to improve upon his poor performance last week. Brissett will be without wide receiver Will Fuller V, who is also on injured reserve. However, Brissett will still have number 6 overall pick Jalen Waddell, Devontae Parker, and Mike Jasicki. It will be interesting to see how the game goes, but here are my three bold predictions for the Miami Dolphins Week 5 matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 3. Miami starts fast, and Tampa Bay starts slow. I do not think the Miami Dolphins have a chance to win this game. The Dolphins are just a mess right now, and even though the Buccaneers are banged up, Miami still does not have a chance. However, the game will not be a blowout, well, at least not in the first half. My first bold prediction is that the Dolphins start fast, and the Buccaneers start slow. For the Buccaneers, they are coming off of an emotional, hard-fought game against Brady's former team, the New England Patriots. I think Brady and the Buccaneers will have a Patriots game hangover to start the game, and it will allow the Dolphins to get after them. Miami should be able to get up on the Buccaneers early, just like they did against the Las Vegas Raiders. I think Miami will go into halftime winning the game before ultimately losing the game in the second half. Miami hot start will be fun to watch for a little and at least not make the game a complete blowout like everyone thinks it will be. 2. Salvan Ahmed finally gets involved in the game plan. This one scares me to talk because this is dependent on Miami 2 offensive coordinators, or is it 3? To make a smart game plan. We have not seen that the entire season, so hopefully, one of those three voices speaks up and says it's time to Salvan Ahmed involved more. Ahmed had a solid preseason, scoring a nice touchdown against the Chicago Bears. It looked as if Ahmed was primed to have a big role this season, but his failures in pass protection and Miami coaching issues haven't allowed that to happen. Well, in week 5, it needs to happen. Ahmed needs to play, and he needs to create mismatches and stress on the defense. Miles Gaskin has looked solid when he gets the ball, but Ahmed needs to get more involved. Tampa Bay's defense is banged up, and lining Ahmed up in the backfield and motioning him out to run routes will put tons of stress on the defense. With all of their moving parts, they are bound to make a mistake as Ahmed motions out, and either Ahmed or a wide receiver should be running wide open. 1. The offensive line will play musical chairs. Whether you like Tua Tungavailoa or not, he is the Miami Dolphins' best quarterback on their roster. Tungavailoa has tons of talent, but he is injury-prone, and that holds him back. Miami knows he is injury-prone, 
so they need to figure out their offensive line this week before Tunga Vailoa returns for week six against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Miami will play musical chairs on Sunday and try to find their best combination of five. I believe that will include Austin Jackson bumping inside to left guard and maybe even seeing Greg Little active in getting reps at left tackle. It will be interesting to see what they end up doing, but there is no way they can just accept the combination they have now isn't good. Brian Flores will do what he can to see who can play where and play their best. Jackson should start the game at left guard, but it remains to be seen if he will trot out there at left tackle to start. In my opinion, he has no business starting at tackle anymore, and I think the musical chairs on Sunday will show that.